Welcome to Mars. All right, welcome back to Mars Radio. I'm here with our next guest. Our next guest is a artist from Oakland, California, and he goes by the name of Calico. Calico, welcome to Mars Radio. What's happening? What's happening? Okay, so like I said, you're from Oakland, California, right? Yeah, from West Oakland, Ghost Town. Born and raised? Born and raised. Okay, and you said West Oakland? Yeah. Okay, so how would you describe West Oakland as opposed to just any other part of Oakland? What makes, um, West, what makes West Oakland different? That's the question I always get to. Um, I feel like West Oakland is just more grimier, like, motherfuckers would be like, we more grimier. I don't know, um, the East like more flashy, stunting, the North just more laid back type shit, you feel me? It's just, West Oakland, I feel like it's more grimier. Okay, okay. So, um, growing up in West Oakland, did you grow up with both parents? Yeah. So, mom and dad? Bob and dad. Okay. Dad ended out jail and shit, but both parents. So for the most part, it was uh, both parents? Yeah, for okay. the most part. Perfect, perfect. And um, what do you remember about growing up in West Oakland as a young, young child? I remember a whole lot of shit. <laughs> what stands All out right. when you think about your childhood in West Oakland? Um, man, my young days, shit. Put it like this, were you guys, how, how were you guys doing financially growing up in West Oakland? When you were a little child, were you, were you well off? Were you guys trying to make ends meet? Uh, we was cool trying to make um, ends meet, but we was cool though. Mom, you, you feel me? She had jobs and shit. So moms and pops always worked? Um, not um, pops all the time, but um, moms, yeah. Moms usually My work. pops was like in and out of jail, so he'd be bouncing back and forth. Okay. And um, when you were a young child growing up in West Oakland, what kind of kid were you? Were you like into the girls? Were you funny, cracking jokes? Were you into sports? What kind of kid uh, were you? I was funny. I liked to play around. I thought I was going to be a comedian, but I was bad as fuck. So you used to get in trouble? Yeah, I stayed in trouble. Is Just at school or at home too? Both. And when you All got right. in trouble in school, was it because you were just messing around or was it because you finished your work and maybe you were bored so you get into some shit or... Or what do you think um, that I ain't gonna from? lie, I was being a class clown. <laughs> I was being a class clown. I was skipping school. I was doing all type of shit that I wasn't supposed to be doing. Okay. But then it was like, I felt like the teachers, they made it like that because it'd be sometimes where I come in, I want to do my work and shit, and they'd just send me straight out to class like, no, nah, not today, you feel me? Just thinking I was going to act, act up in the class and shit. So you might have been doing a little bit much, but the teachers... They were hating low key a little bit too. Yeah, yeah, that's how I felt. They see, they saw the talent at a young age. <laughs> that's how I felt. What kind of surroundings did you have in West Oakland growing up as a, a young child turning into your teenage years? Uh, what you be? What, what what kind of things did you see growing up in West Oakland? What kind of childhood did you have? Were you um, was there any poverty going on around? Were, were you uh, around a lot of rich people? Was there a lot of blacks, um, a lot of whites? Nah, it wasn't a lot of rich people. I wasn't a lot of, um, around a lot of rich people. I was around a lot of um, niggas trying to get rich, you feel me? Like drugs, drugs, you feel me? Drug dealing, a lot of violence. I was around it when it was bad. A lot of hustlers? Yeah, a lot of hustlers. Uh, now, a lot of people say growing up in certain societies, um, that the hustlers or the, the dope dealers or people like that from the neighborhood getting money are the ones that the kids look up to. Would you say that's true? Or was uh, it different for you? So what, yeah, that's true. And yeah, what, so and why do you what? think that is? I just think because it's what we see. You feel me? As we covered up young, that's just, we, we like the flashy shit. We see, see them getting money, we want money. So mm -hmm. I think that's just, being young, seeing something that you want. Okay. And the people that you grew up with, uh, I'm assuming you grew up with um, siblings, cousins, close friends and stuff. Yeah, I, I grew up with cousins. What, what kind of influences were they based on the surroundings that you had growing up in West Oakland? Um, well, my cousins, we always stayed together. So when we fight, we all fight. It was like that kind. You feel me? Right. And what kind of activities would you guys get into uh, growing up? Um, we were scamming. I don't know if you know what that <laughs> is. Like, we, it was old school scamming. Like, we was acting like we was on the basketball team. We needed money for our jersey. So, right. when we was young, back in my days, when we was young, like, I was like 13, 
You feel me? A lot of niggas my age was getting money off scanning. You feel me? Like they was buying cars and shit. So that's what we was doing, acting like we was on the basketball team and we needed money for our jerseys. We have a little piece of paper right. and act like we on the basketball team. So you was taking donations. Donations, taking right? Taking donations. Yeah. Well, what's one of the biggest donations you ever got, or did anybody ever find out? Um. No, I didn't nobody ever find out. I think some people just knew what we was doing, and I think they were just yeah. looking out, you feel me? The biggest donation I got, I ain't gonna lie, I could say probably like 200. 200. About 200. Now, growing up as a man now, you ever come across some kids that you know exactly what they're doing, but you go on and break them off a little something like... Because I think, it's, isn't it better that they're trying to do something rather than just taking it? I mean, it is scamming, but... Right. I, I got, um like, nephews and shit that's in school that be selling candy and shit, so I look out for them here and there. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's the worst thing in the world a kid could be doing at that age, right? right. Yeah. And it doesn't that mean that they got a, a business mentality already? You yeah, know? they got a hustle mentality. Yeah, they got a hustle mentality to get some dollars. Obviously, they're not getting it somewhere else, so they find a, found a way to, to go ahead and get it. Right. Uh, at what age was it that you started getting involved with music? 13. 13. And what's your first memory of music that you remember? Um like being in my um little closet having my own laptop and having a little well there was um a sound recorder on the computer and okay. i was using that so that's how i was rapping now what got you into the idea of making music like that because when i say what's your first memory of music i mean like when's the first time where you're like man i love this this is dope um i was listening to battle rapping okay and um i liked it the way um i listened to lil flip you feel me? Lil Flip a lot, you feel me? With the little DJ screw stuff. And yeah, that was that was it. So are you familiar with battle rap in the sense that like the as in where they stand in the ring, they go back and forth, they do yeah, the I watch, pre Yeah, um, I watch a lot of battle raps. Like I watch a lot of underground artists, a lot of battle raps. Dope dope URL smack and all that stuff. Mm hmm That's what's up. Um so Watching that essentially got you the idea to start rapping? Yeah, just okay. listening to that. And I mean, listening to Bay Area music, period, like the Loonies and D Lows, HD, and shit like that, Low Blood coming up. Like, that's what made me start rapping too. So, all, it was a mixture it of. It was the, just a mixture of a just mixture all. Of the, the environment music, around yeah. you, your peers. And then seeing the battle rap. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, what was the what was the start for music for you? You said you remember uh, recording in the closet off of the computer, the sound recorder. Right. W what What was next for you? Where did you take it after that? Um, then getting my little own. Um, what was that? It was Cubase. I want to say it was Cubase. Yeah, Cubase recording software. Yeah. Yep. So I was using Cubase, and then Pro Tools came out. I got Pro Tools, uh -huh. but I was just I always ever since I was like young. Like, since I started music, I always had my own studio. So I always been rapping off my own shit, like in the house. All right, so uh, you started off with battle rap, uh, watching that, the environment, the artists around you. How has it been uh, later on getting into the music game? And some of these artists that inspired you are, yeah. are artists that you're opening up for, artists that you're doing collaborations with, artists that are now literally your peers. How's that transition been for you? It's, it's cool because it's like a lot of artists that sound like local wise, like in my um, city, Oakland, I grew up with, you feel me, and I know personally, like, right. you feel me, so we got relationships already, so it's like, I know a lot of people that's in the rap game, basically local wise. Did they embrace you when they found out that you yourself were starting to do music? Yeah, yeah, we did, we did, I did plenty of shows with Lil Blood, plenty of shows with Filthy, I did plenty of shows with a lot of people. Okay, uh, and going back to the whole uh, you're from Oakland thing, um, one thing I always notice about Oakland, people from Oakland, not even just artists, people from Oakland, they got a different sense of pride. You meet somebody from Chicago, they're like, I'm from Chicago, yeah. they're happy to be from Chicago. Miami, right. they're happy to be from Miami, but Oakland, it's like a different type of flavor there, bro. What is it about Oakland that makes you guys so proud to be from Oakland? I don't know, it's just a town. Like when when the motherfucker asks you like that, like where you from, the motherfucker just be like, man, I'm from the town. You feel me? That yeah. just I don't know. It's just like it's always been like that, just coming up. It's a lot of pride. Like I wonder if you guys from Oakland, when y'all see each other, you'd be like, oh, they know. 
they're from Oakland too. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Cause you gonna you you know the swag, you know the lingo and all the shit. You could just tell how they moving. Yeah. And you could just be like, yeah, I'm breath from the town. So it's safe me? to say you respect somebody from Oakland a little bit more than somebody from somewhere else. Right. Right. They, they from my city. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's so um, tell us what you've been doing lately with the music. Um, you, re you recently dropped a couple of projects. Tell us about those. Yeah, I just dropped The Last Laugh this month, and I just dropped um, a mixtape called Coding Nightmares. Okay, cool. And uh, tell us about the, uh, the Coding Nightmares. Coding Nightmares is a mixtape, you feel me, basically about Serb, you feel me. You know, I got my own record label called Lean Care Records, so I've been shipping serve so i just made a um tape for um the serve people that's oh. leaning dope dope is that the one that from with the videos from that you just showed me right now no nah, that's the last laugh okay the last laugh tell us about that that's the one with the jokes up right, right, right. that's what, um the last laugh it got um a lot of features on there i got joe blow i got blaster i got young junior i got young demo my lean kids jb the mag pool sauce I got a lot of people on there. That's Nephew. What's That's what's up. Yeah. Young Junior's a friend of the show. Uh, tell us about the Young Junior feature. Um, yeah, Young Junior. That's my boy. So we just I just tapped in with him and told him I need him on the project. And then he said, yeah, yeah. And it was all good. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? That's my boy. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, um, are you doing shows and, and uh, features and stuff like that? I got a show coming up with Com B. Um, New Year's. Okay. So I'll be opening up um, for um, All Black. That's I'll dope. be a special um, guest. That's what's up. Shit, well, you just you just blew the surprise right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's up with Combi though, man? How's it working with him? He does a lot of good shows for the Bay Area, and I think sometimes people try and hate on him, but he's a good dude, bro. Yeah, he's a good nigga. Um, he's doing good. He's still pinning on, promoting. Yeah, he's he doing be, a whole lot of shows, doing a whole lot of shows. You be having a lot of good events and shit. Shout out to Combi. All right, so uh, how can people go ahead and contact you to book you and to uh, get your features and stuff you like that? You can hit me on um, Instagram at Calico underscore Lean Kids 31, C A L I C O E underscore Lean Kids, L E A N K I G Z 31. And um, my fitness page, Calico All Around Fitness. Mm -hmm. So for and, but for the music that that Instagram page yeah all right so they don't and have Lane to email, Care it. They don't Lane have to Care email this or nothing like that or call some no, number they just hit you on the Instagram hit and you me on hit Instagram right. yeah perfect I'm, perfect I'm gonna be in all my messages that's what's up so all y'all out there getting the feature or trying to book them for a show hit them on the Instagram that man enters all right so getting into the fitness tell right. us a little bit about the fitness man why is it important to you um so I'm a personal um trainer I train people it's just I just being consistent with the workout, so I feel like I should be training people doing it. I might as well get paid for it because right. I'm doing it a lot. You feel me? So you do personal training, right? So are they like um, just one-on-one -on -one courses where you're showing somebody the the steps to go through the workout, or do you got like a class? I'm doing um, both one-on-one -on -one sessions and group sessions. Okay, and what kind of routines do you go through for the group sessions, and what are the age ranges? For the age ranges, I ain't did no kids yet, but um, I'm willing to take kids. I'm doing grown-ups, you feel me, teenagers. Now, is that for somebody that's specifically studying for a sport or anybody just generally trying to be more healthy? It's all around fitness. So we hitting whatever angle you trying to get to, you feel me? Whatever goal you trying to get to, we gonna hit it. That's what's up. And how long have you been doing the fitness? I've been doing this for like two years straight, just been consistent doing it. like. Full fledged. Do you see any similarities between doing the fitness as a business and doing the music as a business? Um, a little bit, yes. Yeah, because I think both of them you're gonna have like a a core base, which would be either your clients or your fans. Right. Right. And then you have to provide a good product, and you have to find a way to stand out. Right. And then you have to market it. Mm -hmm. Right. What kind of marketing and, and stuff do you do for your fitness? For my fitness, I got a um, website I'm working on right now. It ain't done. It's almost done. So I had that up and running. And then the prices will be on there. You can book through there. Yeah. So so most of your uh, fitness um, clientele is coming from Instagram and social media? Yeah. That's what's up. Isn't social media so crazy nowadays, bro? Yeah. It's like it'll, having your own business. A lot. No, matter, no matter what I you want to do. I wish we had it when we was younger. Huh. 
But at least we got it now, right? Right. You can literally do anything you want to do through your social media. Right. That's what's up. And um, so tell us a little bit about the boxing. With the boxing, um, I've been with the boxing like on and off. I was on and off, but now i just been sparring a lot. And I, um, I've been um, sparring my boy T Money. He fuck with the boxing tough, so I've been on and off with him. So we're about to put together a, a celebrity boxing tournament. Uh, we um, put together um, a boxing um, match, um, well, a boxing event, not a match, a boxing event up in Sacramento, and it went good. That's what's up. You guys gonna think about doubling back on that? Um, we thinking about it. Yeah, Are we thinking about it. Any similarities between boxing and the rap? There's, there's got to be, right? Because you started with battle rap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's how you got into boxing. Now you was watching battle rap and you're like, you know what? Let's take this outside, bro. <laughs> Who, who's your favorite battle rapper? Calico. Calico? Is and it? I ain't even, because my name Calico is just like, because I, I ain't even know about Cali. Well, I did know about Calico back then, but not before I got my name. So it's just crazy because the way he rapping his flow, I, I fuck with it. From De from Detroit, right? I feel like, yeah, that's my top battle rap. Him and um, Arsenal. That's Arsenal so damn disrespectful with it, yeah. ain't he? Yeah. He's so, he, I, I'm surprised he got out of Oakland when he came in Battle Fab. <laughs> I'm really surprised. Anything else you want to leave your uh, fans and supporters with? Um, um, yeah, just check me out on YouTube. Calico Vivo, C A L I C O E V E V O. That's where you can check out all my videos. I'm on all online retailers Spotify, iTunes, Apple, everything. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, it. sounds good. Well, uh, there you have it. This is Calico, and we're with Mars Radio, and we out. Welcome to Mars.